12.01 a.m., February 1st, 1968. We can't repaint 4,000 locomotives and 200,000 cars overnight. So the old labels will be around for a while. Let them be your reminders that we've combined the best of two great railroads. But from now on, call us Penn Central. locomotive engineer in Massachusetts, a resort complex in Florida, a load of automobiles in Michigan, a research scientist in Cleveland, a commuter train in Westchester, an amusement park in Georgia, a coal train in West Virginia, a basketball game in New York, a real estate development in California, a car builder in Pennsylvania, an industrial park in Texas, a computer complex in Philadelphia, a trailer manufacturer in Pennsylvania, a pipeline fuel service for jet aircraft at Kennedy Airport, a station agent in Chicago, a new kind of train racing through Maryland, These and many, many more are parts of the Penn Central, America's largest transportation company and its sixth largest corporation. With more than 20,000 miles of tracks, we serve 100 million people in 14 states, two Canadian provinces, and the District of Columbia. Penn Central is first and foremost a railroad. From our rail operations come 80% of our revenue, but unfortunately very little of our net income. One reason for this is the changing pattern of public travel. Our passenger operations lost $85 million last year. Our challenge is to adapt our service to today's needs. So we're phasing out the long haul runs the public has shown it neither wants nor requires. As a substitute, we will offer something new. Penn Central is investing $45 million, the Department of Transportation, $11 million, to introduce a new concept of passenger service designed for highly populated urban corridors. In preparation for high-speed travel between New York and Washington, our 226-mile main line along this vital corridor has been transformed into the best roadway in the world.
improvements included installation of welded rail, new ties and ballast, high-level station platforms, and stronger catenary wire. A fleet of 50 self-propelled metro liners costing $21 million will be used in this service. Constructed by the Bud Company, they will emphasize speed, convenience, safety, and luxury. Initial schedules call for a two-hour, 58-minute run between New York and Washington. Increasing public assistance in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut is helping us to modernize commuter service in the New York and Philadelphia metropolitan areas. Operating contracts with city, regional, and state authorities are improving service and cutting deficits, while public financing helps to buy new equipment. Freight traffic, of course, is the backbone of the Penn Central, and we are engaged in an enormous effort both to give better service and increase our volume of traffic. Coal is our most important source of traffic. The 730 unit trains we are moving each month carry much of it. To open additional coal markets, Penn Central has built two new lines, a 35 mile branch south from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, and a 10 mile westward extension of our Captina branch in southeastern Ohio. We have a new automated coal pier at Ashtabula, Ohio for fast and efficient loading of Great Lakes colliers. Its million ton ground storage capacity will permit movement of coal into Ashtabula during winter months when Great Lakes shipping is at a standstill. It also speeds unloading of iron ore, another important source of freight traffic. Our merged system connects a great grain producing region with leading eastern ports and markets. We are emphasizing use of high capacity covered hopper cars and improved service to build this traffic. Penn Central transports about 20% of the nation's automobile output and about 21% of its piggyback shipments. We're developing a new market through the use of containers for export and import and have interchange agreements with 45 steamship lines for containerized shipments to and from all parts of the world. Another freight traffic objective of Penn Central is to develop solid train loads of manufactured goods and packaged foodstuffs operating between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts on through schedules. Expansion of industrial potential along our tracks is also a key to building freight traffic. Our industrial development specialists assisted last year in the location or expansion of more than 700 manufacturing plants on Penn Central lines, adding over 300,000 carloads to our annual freight potential. Hand in hand with the development of new sources and concepts of freight traffic are Penn Central's programs for improving its car and locomotive fleet. Last year, we acquired some 250 high-powered diesel locomotives and more than 3,000 freight cars. Many were built in our own shops, where thousands of others were completely reconditioned. We have spent huge sums, more than a billion dollars since 1961, for rolling stock and construction of new facilities. Our newest is a 70-track electronic classification yard near Albany, New York.
fully automated with built-in ice and snow defrosters, it represents an investment of $29 million. An exciting innovation on the Penn Central is the automatic car identification system it tested and pioneered. One of its first practical applications is in daily use at Denholm, Pennsylvania. Without pausing in its trip from mine to consumer, a coal train passes over a new kind of scale. Beside it is an electronic scanner, which reads the car numbers from color-coded labels. The numbers and weights are automatically reported to a Penn Central Information Center. This is just one of many far-reaching developments made possible by computer technology, a field in which we lead the industry. Our system of instant car location is another example. By means of a vast communications network linked directly to computers, any of our hundred sales offices across the nation can find out in a few seconds the location of any car on the Penn Central system. We also lead the railroad industry in the size and scope of our technical research program. Scientists and technicians at this Cleveland Center undertake both basic and applied research in their quest for innovative equipment and techniques. For example, the snowblower, now widely used by Air Force and railroads in cold climates, was developed and patented by the Center. It is a means of quickly and easily clearing switches, one of many cost-saving performance-improving achievements by the Center. Penn Central is taking bold steps to improve its railroad operations. We're taking even bolder steps to strengthen our corporate position through diversification, broadening our earning capacity. In several cities, we are utilizing the valuable space over our tracks, like the 87 acres around 30th Street Station in Philadelphia. A few blocks away, Penn Center, built above Suburban Station, is one of the most successful urban redevelopment projects in the country. Another project is being advanced for 148 acres of our property in Pittsburgh. The potential for such development is also demonstrated by the new Madison Square Garden and Penn Plaza at rebuilt Pennsylvania Station in New York. Or by the activity around Grand Central, where four more skyscrapers are being planned or built. In this area, we also operate the well-known Barclay, Biltmore, Commodore, and Roosevelt Hotels. Rows of buildings along Park Avenue occupy our air rights. In Washington, Union Station, which we own jointly with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, is to be converted into a national visitor center and leased to the National Park Service. We will remodel the station interior and install a 4,000 car parking garage and heliport over the rail yards. In Chicago, where Penn Central operations will be combined at Union Station, we have 50% interest in Gateway Center, where two new office buildings are complete and a third is being planned over the tracks. Diversification has led us into fields which may have seemed impossible to old-time railroaders. Amusement parks, for example, one outside Atlanta, the other between Dallas and Fort Worth, and both highly successful. They are operated by Great Southwest Corporation, of which we own 80%. Great Southwest, 
sells and leases land in four industrial parks with 6,000 acres in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and a 3,000-acre park in Atlanta. In Florida, Arvida Corporation, in which Penn Central has a 59% interest, is expanding its world-famous Boca Raton Hotel and Club. The modernization and expansion program will double its facilities for conventions and group meetings. Arvida is developing more than 40,000 acres of real estate on both the Atlantic and Gulf coasts of Florida. In California, Maco Realty Company, a wholly owned Penn Central subsidiary, has the largest inventory of land available for development in the Los Angeles area. One of our most profitable subsidiaries is the Buckeye Pipeline Company. It is the principal supplier of jet fuel at New York's Kennedy International Airport one of the outlets for its 7,500-mile network. It transports crude oil and refined products in a seven-state area within Penn Central Territory and in Florida and Washington State. Another subsidiary is the Strick Corporation, a pioneer in the manufacture of aluminum trailer and container equipment. Its plant in Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania, is the source of many of the containers we use in this concept of freight transportation. Trailers, pipelines, real estate, amusement parks, progressive railroading, that's Penn Central, or part of it at least. Perhaps its most important asset is people, the 100,000 men and women who make Penn Central go. We know that much remains to be done to reshape our rail system to meet its challenges. But we're on the move, progressive and ready to make change work for us in achieving our goals. We know our company has an ever-broadening base of diversification, that its imaginative programs are creating new opportunities for us, and that it is molding itself to a new image the shape of the railroad of the future. All of us are proud to say, call us Penn Central.